Welcome to our video on Kingsway Soft SAP Integration Toolkit, which we have introduced in our release wave 24.1. We will demonstrate how to work with the different components that are included in this toolkit. Let's start with the SAP Connection Manager. Here, I have my Visual Studio Integration Services project open, and within a package inside of it, I right-click on the Connection Manager section and select New Connections from the list. Let's choose SAP Connection Manager. In the UI that opens up, let's first choose the connection type from the available options. In our case, we choose Custom Application Server. Uh, afterwards, we can enter the other details like System ID, Instance Number, and Application Server. Note that these configurations would change based on what connection type is chosen. Now we can provide the authentication information, like client username and password. And then afterwards, we can click on Test Connection button to validate the configuration. Next, we can move to the Advanced Settings page, where we can configure the advanced settings and optional settings as well, such as secure network settings, trace level, and directory. Once the configurations are confirmed, Click OK to save and close the Connection Manager. Now that we have the SAP Connection Manager, let's go through the SSIS toolbox and pick the SAP Table Source Component. Drag and drop it to the workspace and double click to open it. Within, choose the Connection Manager from the list. Afterwards, we move over to pick the table name. For that, click on the ellipsis button. Here, wildcards are also supported. Click on Search, which gives a list of the tables available. Pick one and click OK. Next, choose the RFC function name from the list. In the WHERE clause section, you can choose the condition on which a WHERE clause needs to be applied. Choose the field name, the operator, and then specify whether the value set would be a variable or a static value. Uh, we select variable, after which I can choose any available variable in my package. Along with that, the max rows returned and batch size can be set as required. Keep the max rows returned as zero to return all the values. Next, we move over to the columns page, where the metadata or fields can be verified based on the configuration chosen in the general page. In here, it shows whether the field is a key or not, as well as its data type and a short description. We can select OK to save and close the component. Next, we take a look at the SAP RFC destination component. I have a data spawner here, which can act as a dummy source component to support the flow. Scroll through the SSIS toolbox to find the SAP RFC destination component. Drag and drop it to the workspace and connect it to the source. Please note that the SAP RFC destination can also act as a source component. Open the component and choose the connection manager from the list. Next, we choose the RFC function name. For this, we click on the ellipsis button to open the search window. Wildcards are supported here as well. Click on the search and choose the required function from the list. Once the RFC function is selected, you would see the four tabs come up in the general page. Import for single objects, export for single objects, tables for multiple objects, and exceptions. In the first tab, import, you can see the parameter name, table name, field name, and other details available. We can also assign values to the parameter as shown here. The value can be static or a variable. The second tab export has the option to add parameters to the default output by clicking the checkbox as shown here. Similar, in the third tab, you can add the parameter as outputs by choosing them. And the last tab is for exceptions. Now we move on to mapping, where input column values can be mapped to the RFC parameters. In the error handling page, you have options to choose from. Fail on error, which fails the whole batch at an error. Ignore error option ignores the error. A recommended approach to handle errors would be to choose redirect rows to error output, with which the error records can be redirected to another destination by using a separate output from the component. You get important details such as error code, error columns, and RFC error messages in the output. This concludes our video on SAP Toolkit. Thanks for watching. Kingsway Soft, data integration made easy.